And there we fucking are. Hey. 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 Hello, everybody. Hi, friends. We're back with another edition of Notorious DMG. I didn't almost say the other acronym before, like last week. And we've got a new player with us. We've got Steven the DM joining us. Hey, that's me. Steven, why don't you go ahead and give us your elevator pitch of who you are and what you do? I am Steven the DM, as stated multiple times now, but don't forget it, Steven the DM. Uh, that is the name of my channel, where you can find me on YouTube, where I make the best tips for D&D on all of the internet. Yes, I am saying that I am better than Matt Mercer and Matt Colville. Uh, come watch my channel and tell me I'm not. That's solid. I, I believe you. Wow, that's bold. Okay. Yeah. Controversy gets clicks, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that hot take. I mean, on that note, I run faster than Usain Bolt, so. Damn, we're just going everywhere. I'm just it's, throwing that out there. It's the water up there. True. Well, <laughs> no, you, it absolutely is not. <laughs> you have to be that fast if you're having to run from bears and moose and all the fucking It time. is honestly in spite of the water up here. <laughs> <laughs> Mooses that eat your internet cords. Right. Hey, we just got our uh, first Sarah Palin comment in the chat. <laughs> sure did. Oh, shocker. Look look who it is. <laughs> I would never have guessed. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, do we want to just jump in? Do you want us to do a recap? How, how do you want us Yeah, to... well, that was that was Steven. Uh, Bert, do you want to introduce your, your channel and yourself for the third time and perhaps final if you guys uncover everything really expeditiously which is not how dnd works oh come on sometimes it works to plan i'm, <laughs> I'm playing the character morneth your happy go lucky thief i run the channel of steam steel and murder which can be found at of steam steel and murder dot simplecast dot com i went to your website today and it is much more beautiful than mine and i felt personally attacked <laughs> Glad I did it for you. <laughs> uh, Matt, do you want to introduce us to Jowzam's Den and all of its exciting contents? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. I'm Matt, and I run Jowzam's Den. On there, we do uh, live actual playthroughs, and then uh, afterwards, uh, we do uh, interviews with the designers and creators of the games themselves. I'm going to swing it on over to Chuck. Holy shit, that's me? Uh, I happen to be Chuck. And I also, <laughs> uh, I also happen to be playing the character uh, Acadius Aves, Conjurer Extraordinaire. Uh, still out there working on stuff so I can publish my book, A Conjurer's Guide to Dungeoneering. Um, and also, I run the channel Defenders of Cobalt over on Twitch. Um, we're idiots, and we're fantastic, and... Uh, if you're watching this on Twitch right now, you're actually watching it on my channel. So good job, you. Yeah. Uh, I think all that remains is me, and I will inform all of you that I am Seth Bell. I am the dungeon master and producer of the podcast called The Monday Nights. Um, it's pretty much like every other actual play podcast out there. I just think that we're slightly more uh, vulgar and or inebriated on any given episode and i think that uh uniqueness out of being crass is a very very uh important thing and i hold it near and dear to my heart that's what we were going for with this channel right just being drunk the whole time or uh, should i have not pre-game i <laughs> i mean why did they call it pre-gaming if you don't do it before D D? right I really think your channel needs a beer review on what you're getting splattered on that's $5 or less for the night. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's great. That. Uh, every week we introduce uh, the drink of the day, and on Monday it was Jameson, as it has been for, I think we have 13 episodes, 13 consecutive Mondays. <laughs> you need a, <laughs> you get a little variety in there. This coming I mean, Monday... You, you can put other shit in Jameson to make it really good, but none of those things are important. Uh, that's very true. Going for that sponsorship, huh? 
Uh, yes. Speaking of <laughs> my many roles and responsibilities, such as the foremost spokesperson for Jameson Irish Whiskey, um, I am also the dungeon master of this current uh, leg of the notorious DMG uh, multimedia uh, content thing. Super group. <laughs> I love that super group. We're like uh, we're like egg whites. We're a superfood or whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. Um, coming into our third session, um, I'm gonna need a little bit of assistance from my compatriots, giving a thorough recap to Stephen and those who may be joining us for the first time, because my notebook is with the other Knights of Monday at their home. So, um. Starting off from episode one, where you guys had stepped outside of the city to retrieve a golden treasure chest that was making a racket, um, you guys saw a man sprinting off into the woods. And that's where episode one ended. And when episode two began, you chased after him, uh, lost his trail, and then returned to the crowd of people that had gathered around the scary noise, out of which stepped Mornath and Orbert. Um, you three, now united, stepped around another corner of the outer wall of this city and encountered a large group of skeletons assailing the front gate, being held off only by Craig and his wife, whose name I always forget, and Tillicum, the giant, from all of whom are from the giant, or not giant's guild, the fighter's guild. Um, you all fought wisely and bravely. You created a big muddy vine pit in which there was lots of nude wrestling. Um, don't, don't forget that. the glitter. Uh, there was oh, yeah. a great deal of glitter in the pit as well. It was basically... Um, I wish I had like a soundboard with some WWE intro shit, but I don't. <laughs> uh, in the midst of this uh, ruckus, Tilikum, the hill giant, was slain by an exploding... A uh, fire skeleton. And you went to report this attack to the mayor, who was laying in bed, and you had to retrieve his son to gain the command word to unleash or release him from the magic sleep that he induces on himself every day to every night to fight his insomnia. And um, at that point, you spoke with the mayor and Lithian and the youngest son of the family and. Uh, Basil or Basriel or whatever I named the creepy butler who was also in bed with the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Basil. And uh, you, after explaining the situation um, and the mayor admitting to, I mean, not really admitting to anything, but I guess uh, expositing his love of Tilikum and the Fighters Guild in general, he dashed out into the street with you guys to... Um, to mourn the loss of such a beloved uh, member of our community in Balreth. Uh, him and the members of the Fighters Guild chained him to the side of the main inn in town so that his corpse would not be used for further necromantic deeds. And at this point, he was basically like, well, you guys better figure out what's going on. And then you guys started investigating some things. You found some old men in some bathtubs, and you stole a robe from a teenager. <laughs> we attempted you attempted to but it then the man in the bathtub uh, wagged his finger at you and said no 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 yeah that's that's, that's about right yeah so um and that's where we left off yeah it basically left off there uh at this point man i love that this whole evening has gone with just like a big crowd in the middle of the town uh a cleric walks out of the big crowd and says, That's "I'm Doric." I, am... <laughs> I, I, I was muted. I'm coming in. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. I... No, don't worry. I am Doric, son of the Hangman, follower of Saint Cuthbert. I am here to help you on your quest. Uh... Can you heal people? It's not my specialty. Mm. Oh. Are you looking to get paid? I am looking to vanquish evil. Okay. Perfect. Oh, that is so that is a cheap. price we can yeah. meet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd love to have you aboard. I am a uh, late twenties human, uh, very shortly, almost buzz cut hair, uh, black hair, 
and I'm wearing extremely simple clothing, a chain shirt that is uh, in very much disrepair, and uh, I have a buckler strapped to my arm. I'm wielding a crossbow. I never actually uh, wrap it around. I'm always holding it. And then I have a cudgel hanging from my belt. I love this man. Okay, well, you work for cheap, uh, so yeah, you can help us. Yeah. I had a feeling you would say that. It's another one we don't have to cut in. That is highly advantageous for us. Have you heard the good news about St. Cuthbert? Uh, Is it that he's going to the Super Bowl? (laughs) As Acadius is locked in conversation with him, I am going to whistle and walk away. His name is New Orleans Saint, comma, Cuthbert. (laughs) (laughs) I'll beat it into you later. Oh, I don't know. I'm a little Intima excited. (laughs) Well, after this uh, thoughtful and enriching character development, what does our (laughs) team decide to do? Well... (sighs) Last we, we we let off, we had that cool split screen excitement where uh, the the bones essentially read, kill my brother. Uh, so I believe we need to hunt down Lynx's router and find out what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you I have that one know in my notes. And I was like, why do I have Lynx's router in my <laughs> that is so nice of you. You know. <laughs> that's right. Okay, that's that's our enemy's name. Linksis. Linksis. Right. Yeah. Linksis. Linksis is actually the name of Lithian's younger brother. Uh, his his name is also Lithian's younger brother. Yep. Linksis Rotor. And that was he sounds thing. formidable. <laughs> he is eight. <laughs> The other clue that we had was the person that I saw, or that I think I saw, because I didn't roll very well, was wearing a white cloak, a robe, very similar to Lithian and his family, what they wear. And Lynx's router also has one of those. And so does the king. That's why we were harassing that whole family and tried to steal uh, uh, the robe from a teenager. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Where do we go from here, gentlemen? There's been skeleton squirrels and skunks and other creatures coming out of the forest recently. But nobody knows where from. Or why. Nobody questioned it until a exploding skeleton blew up. Telecom. Somewhere in my state of drunken jello fueled madness last week, I forgot to mention that there is a a small graveyard outside of town. Oh, that's kind of important. That is yeah, definitely... with like the necromancy going on. I figured, like <laughs> looking back through like my phone notes about the plot points of this game, that the the cemetery might be important with the necromancy. <laughs> hey guys, let's go check out that cemetery outside of town. What do you think? That you haven't is checked like it out yet. What have you guys been doing? Railroady feeling thing I've ever done. <laughs> well, we showed up, and the Fighters Guild made us a fantastic dinner and sang to us, and then we fought off a horde of skeletons, and then we tried to rob the royal family, and now we're here with you. You fought skeletons, and you didn't go to the graveyard. Uh, Amateurs. I can't. I can't argue against that. Let's uh, right, fair, follow no me. I know the way. Universal knowledge based around the cemetery had been dispensed to any of them. <laughs> Where is the brother right now? We left him in the Lithian palace. Or his younger brother, Linksis. The younger brother, yes. Linksis. Linksis, you guys, uh, you woke him up when you uh, knocked on his door to ask about his robe. Should we go talk to him before we go to the graveyard? We tried, and then he got all weird and awkward, and we had to enlist Basil's help. Remember, he appeared in the window. 
because he was like, I'm an eight-year-old. What are you doing in my room? This is highly Well, that was, bef- that was before the Bones told us that they were sent to kill whoever's brother. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we could go ask him. Let's find out if he knows anything about Lithian's uh, special friend. That he's wait, 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 wait. You adult men visited a young boy's room alone? We stood in the hallway, and Basil was there. Right. It, when you when you put it like that, all accusational. It really, it really sounds quite bad. But it wasn't. It was. It was innocent. I'm definitely going to need to teach you about Saint Cuthbert's cudgel. <laughs> <laughs> to the graveyard. So, so to the graveyard. Um, you guys, there's basically like one primary road um, that's that splits off of a highway that leads into the front gate of this town. Um, that very same road, about, I would say, three quarters of a mile uh, south of town along that road, there is a, a small cemetery off the side of the road. And um, yeah, but you guys are just going to walk three quarters out there? Yes. We haven't rested, have we? Uh, I am very well rested. After casting all those spells, making the muck goo glitter. Yeah, we have... I'll say it is my punishment as the dungeon master for not having my notes that you guys are fully stocked on your items because I cannot verify that any of them have or have not been used. <laughs> all right, let's go. I won't argue with that, yeah. Let's go. Okay. As you are walking, do you share any... Uh, exciting and or thoughtful role play moments or do you just kind of like narratively teleport i would like to think that i've been preaching this whole time <laughs> you're one of those clerics mm. i'll be walking far ahead i'll try to catch up to teach him about a uh, saint cuthbert's bastion in arcadia okay yeah i'll i'll politely listen uh, and, and Henroth, you do have woodland stride, so if you went into the woods just a bit off the road, you could easily outrun uh, yeah, Doris. Let's, let's do that. I'm going to disappear into the woods with woodland stride. <laughs> See you guys there. I will question every point of uh, St. Cuthbert's uh, <laughs> uh, religion, arguing with... And I actually don't know how to defend it, so <laughs> I... I will be very vehement that I am right, but I will make no logical Can sense. I drop. You're going to hit him with the Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Just yell really loudly. The cemetery is making all these frogs gay. And <laughs> that is why you need to become a follower of St. Cuthbert. Well, I certainly feel enriched. You guys arrive at the cemetery. <laughs> it is a, a roughly, I would say, like 150 by 150 yard uh, a plot of land with a very stereotypical, maybe three foot high black uh, iron wrought little fence. But not quite a fence, more just like a decorative enclosure, you know? And uh, for the gay frogs. Yeah, there's a sign. It's just like a very recent sign. It's like those signs on the side of the road where they do like a little cross and a, and a bouquet of flowers for people that died in car crashes. It's like that, but it says, watch out for all the gay frogs. And if you guys have seen my handwriting before, it would look very familiar. <laughs> oh, man. You aren't winning me over with this St. Cuthbert guy. Do I see any skeletons walking around the graveyard? There are a million skeletons roll for initiative. No, I'm kidding. Um, inside of the enclosure of the graveyard, there is basically no skeletons visible oh. from above ground. I mean, you can't see underground, so there's probably skeletons in there, but... This was a waste of time. relations with the gay frogs. I told you, you get this lead was useless. What's our next plan? <laughs> Well, we can go talk to Linksis. We're going to walk all the way back after coming here? Well, we don't. Well, this was a dead. Well, this was dumb. Dead. Let's go back. No, I yeah. guess. Uh, let's is there, any... Is there any indication that the skeletons came from here? Like, do we have a trail? Let's do some investigating. What is the most appropriate skill for this? 
Um, I would recommend for the magical among you spellcraft and then search for the less magical among you or i mean whichever one of those two things you're better at for your character i'm terrible in both I nice can, i can give a a pretty solid spellcraft check so i'll start rummaging around the graveyard for any uh magical i don't know fucking leftovers and i'm just looking for physical trails Okay, Henroth, you encounter a small dandelion that has been crushed underfoot, and you give it a proper Hebrew burial. This encompasses all of your focus and time in the cemetery. It takes you two and a half hours to perform this ritual. <laughs> I sit there. It was too soon. Hmm. It wasn't your time. Uh, Mornath with your incredibly well done search check you encounter a couple of graves that look as though they have been dug up and kind of like reburied i don't know what the terminology for all of these things are it looks as though the dirt has been moved and then put back into place and it's rested like for a much shorter amount of time than most of the other graves that you're seeing and Acadius, with your 14 spellcraft, you encounter some of the, like, some residue of the material components necessary to generate uh, skeletons and raise dead. You find, like, um, strips of human flesh, like, very tiny ones, like the leftover, like, little bits that don't get consumed by the spell. Uh, you find a couple of teeth. You find... Other, you know, necromantic spell components lying about. That's exciting. Uh, I and would... Doric, did you did you roll? No, I did not. We were rolling investigation. Uh, search or spellcraft, search. whichever one you're better at, or would thematically fit the way your character would go about it. Okay. You find in the, in the rear, I would say, left corner of this graveyard, there is a, a couple of, like, bones just poking out of the ground that uh, appear to have been, like, scorched up and or burned. Basically, everybody rolled high enough to get an individual clue beside Henroth, who is still giving a... A Mongolian throat singing eulogy to the dandelion that one of you crushed walking in. It appears that some bones have experienced the glory of St. Cuthbert. I don't know what that means, but I did find spell Ooh. components. Uh, signs of necro... Mancy and uh, resurrections of skeletons. Heresy. Uh, you are not wrong. How do you know about such dark arts? Uh, are you a heretic? We're we're just going to put a time out, and I'm going to go check how that Henroth dandelion burial's going. What do we do about these burnt bones? Well, maybe someone was cooking dinner. Maybe. Did you check to see if they're people bones or dinner bones? I suppose if someone's enthusiastic enough, people bones could be dinner bones. They are people bones that appear to have had absolutely no contact with any dinner-based materials. Okay. Yeah, they're people bones. <laughs> Okay. I step on them, make sure the bones that are actually dead. Thorough. Very good. They are quite dead. Undead. Yeah. Bert, as this, or I guess I should say Mornath, either way, uh, as these clues are being discussed, you find... 
what appears to be like almost like a crayon. I'm not sure how else I would describe it. It's like a short sort of gossamer, like very like shiny. Uh, it looks like a like a pencil or a pen or something like just a general writing utensil, but it's very like blocky and thick and indiscriminate and a bright neon blue. So waxy. Kind of waxy, but not entirely. It's more like less like crayon waxy and more like candle waxy, if that makes literally any sense. Did you find oh, a birthday candle? When um, we saw the writings, kill my brother on the skeletons, was it carved into the bone or written on the bone? Written on the bone. Oh. Colorful like this? It was bright neon blue. Well, looky here. Oh, shit. So if I wrote, pay me one million gold on this next skeleton. Dude, you'll be rich. Um, Is there any other trail about? So, yeah, point this out, you know, uh, to you wizardly bunch, spell casty, hand wavy. Jazz yeah. hand guys. <laughs> Spell casty hand wavy jazz hands guys. <laughs> um, and then look to see where, where it's dropped. Just look around to see if I can actually find um, like footprints that are not like, you know, bony footprints, like actually shod, people wearing shoes kind of footprints. You do encounter some of those. <laughs> do You're they? saying these skeletons know how to put on shoes? Not directly, no. Do I'm, the footprints look like a full-grown adult, or do they look like an eight-year-old? I'm not sure how I would... I mean, roll just a general intelligence check looking at this footprint. Can't tell. Could be a lady's. <laughs> Yeah, there's just there's a lot of factors that go into I mean, you're a, a rogue and you've done you're not like a ranger by any means, but you've done some tracking and some thinking and some following and, and things of that nature and in a in a soft, loamy, earthy type of place like a graveyard, a lot of factors go into creating a, a footprint or set of footprints such as this. So I mean, you can determine that it was recent within the last couple of days, but you can't really determine the size and or age of the individual who may have created it. How about directionality? Where is it going? It is leading back towards Belrath. Or Balrath. I'm getting my vowels all mixed up. Mm. <laughs> hey, uh, Mornath, could I could I take a look at that uh, that blue thing you found? Oh, I haven't touched it. I just kind of pointed it out. Oh, okay. Well, I will. <laughs> I want to I want to pick that up and I want to kind of handle it and see if it leaves any residue on my hands. It absolutely does. Okay. I tuck it in my pocket. I'm like, guys, I'm ready to go. Going to start the next Blue Man group. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> this wizarding shit doesn't work out. Multiclassing the bird. Mm-hmm. Well, we... with this, Henroth will wipe his eyes and get up and wander over. <laughs> what you guys, what's going on? What's with all the soup bones? What are, what are you guys doing? Uh, these are actually tree bones. Someone killed a tree in this area. Oh my god. Not another funeral. Well, we're going to be here for a while, guys. <laughs> Henroth, you have officially cemetery. lost your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go over and look at the footprints. and. Uh... I'm going to be muting my microphone. <laughs> Hello, dogs. Well, the only thing I know about boots is how to shove them up evil's ass. That is a worthwhile skill. Um, okay. Yes. Yes, it is. So you guys found some boot prints? Uh, yeah, Mornath uh, found uh, this weird blue writing utensil and some footprints. Well, let's follow them. It looks like it's heading back to town. Um, <laughs> real quick. Any of the graves that had been like dug up and repacked, as you said, more gently, 
Um, has everything risen from them, or are there still some that look like they may have occupant? That is a solid thing to bring up. Yeah, let's dig up a grave and find out. I think so. Uh, Agreed. Angry man with a cudgel. You should uh, definitely lead the initiative here. Hopefully there's undead in the grave. Mm. I'll... I'll start using my cudgel to dig up a grave. Because I don't have a shovel. Okay. <laughs> I well, they've already been dug up once, so, you know, it's softer. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to use a large blunt stick and kind of like try to shovel it and scrape it out as best as I can until I'm six feet under. Cudgel does sound a lot like shovel, but it does not work as well. No, it does not. But you know what does work well as a shovel? A shield. Hmm. I may not have the skills. I may not have the tools. But by God, I have the perseverance. <laughs> and I'm still digging. I, I'm probably about two inches now. <laughs> yeah, we're going to roleplay every second of this whole digging. So I'm just going to pull out my phone and you just let me know. Uh, someone do a quick search. Uh, see how long it takes to dig up a grave of loose dirt by cudgel. Will Google have that? No. You completely <laughs> dig up the grave. It takes you about 45 minutes. Oh. And inside... That's you impressive, even if I had a shovel. Yeah. You determine quite thoroughly that there is absolutely no bones in here. Good. I would hate to have desecrated someone's grave. Well, you certainly did. They just didn't happen to be there at the time. Doesn't count. Trust me. I'm a cleric. <laughs> All right. Back to town? Well, someone should fill in this grave just for posterity's sake. Um, just kind of kick some dirt back on top of it. Yeah, I'll give it a few little kicks. I'm like, I'm good. Well, my cudgel could be a bit more blunt. So I guess I'll fill it back in. Uh, that's a team it's kind player. of like the opposite of sharpening your cudgel. <laughs> yeah, you have to dull it more. <laughs> well, I think you guys have gathered a great deal of the information that was available in this cemetery. What is your next objective? See if we can follow the print prince back to town or wherever it might divert. I will say that they lead directly out of the cemetery straight towards town, but that is directly along a well-traveled road, and you lose sight of the tracks. You could make like a survival check to try and follow them directly within town, but I would say it would be quite difficult. Actually, what I'd like to find out is if I can get one good solid impression of the prince, find out if this guy's wearing Bruno Mollies or what. That's an excellent question. Um, make a survival check for me. Survival, there's a good one. All right, let's see. Dang, back to back eights. That does unfortunately not grant you the opportunity to <laughs> create one of these footprints. Well, obviously, these shoes were off the shelf. <laughs> you determined that they were neither Louis Vuitton nor Gucci. Hmm. Well, does that... That eliminates the ruling family, then, doesn't it? Yeah, completely. Well, I guess they're... I mean, everyone in this town is rich enough for, like, Fendi and Cartier anyway, so... <laughs> it's true, they were just throwing money around when we showed up. They sure shit were. Well, I was thinking about starting a line of shoes called St. Cuthbert. You should do that. It'd be like the, uh, what do they call them? Like the new lines? Just, you know, instead of for old men, they're for religious people. <laughs> they're for everyone. Oh. Tight Are you talking <laughs> about <laughs> New Balance? <laughs> new Balance, that's it. Uh. <laughs> you goddamn asshole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for old men? <laughs> 
I'm just picturing the New Balance fucking billboard along the highway. New Balance for old men and religious people. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that is, yes. Uh, Also, I I do have a plan. If we head back to town and we find Linksys, we need to check his hands out because there's a chance if he was the culprit, he'll have some of this blue shit all over his hands. Uh, at this point still, do you think? Uh, you know, when you were a uh, young lad, the age of uh, <laughs> Linksys, how frequently did you wash your hands? So, you think he blew himself? I was, <laughs> I was raised by wolves. I... Uh, I definitely... He's never washed his hands. Yeah, well... It's only one way to find out. And you know what? If we do find him and his hands are blue, not only can we thrash him for the whole fucking skeleton fiasco, but also for just being gross and not washing his hands enough. So you intend to, in all in the same evening, uh, interrogate a child, leave for 30 minutes, and then interrogate that child again. Yes, hoping his hands are blue. <laughs> and I mean, beat it, him, apparently. It, did, it did take me 45 minutes to dig the hole, so it's been at least an hour. Yeah. That's true. That's a good point. He's probably just still asleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll use my stride to get back ahead of you, fellas. You know, I also... Oh, wait. For you. I need you to tell successfully you successfully dodged the, the preaching. Nice. Actually, make an attack roll with your preaching, and you make a reflex save. <laughs> Oh man, is that is that charisma versus like willpower? Yeah, make a reflex save that beats fifteen. I mean, if it's charisma, it's sixteen. Mm. Oh. oh no, you do not oh. dodge his pamphlets not... <laughs> and his words, dude. I am not out of your shot. Oh man, that's great. Also... So let me tell you about the day I first realized the greatness of Saint Cuthbert. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, it was a glorious day many years ago. The sun was shining. The birds were chirping. Oh, man. That's painful. Also, I think your guys' roles are uh, being whispered again. Ah, oh, they're being hidden. Dang it. Yeah. All right, I'll just, I'll just roll a d20 and add on whatever the plus is. Instead of using this this wonderful character sheet. Well, I saw the reflex check. Maybe you just need to scroll down. It's um I have the, G- the GM whisper as default turned on on all your skills. So the yeah, that one showed. Right. And uh you can actually turn it off on the character sheet just by deleting the slash WGM. Noted. It's weird that it's set up that way. I think it's supposed to be only for a few skills, like a uh, search so the GM sees it but the rest of the party doesn't. Because it appears that not all of them have it. Like, handle animal is public, but gather information is not. Yeah, there's a whole weird system with D&D 3.5 and, uh, like, checks that the DM makes for the character and shit like that. And I just, I just, you roll dice because it's your character. So, yeah, on the character sheet, when you roll a skill, just delete up until the ampersand symbol and you'll be fine it should be public excellent so you guys uh successfully return to town um for the most part the villagers have started like returning to their beds and i mean it's nearly morning like it's nearly 6 a.m by now so i mean the sun is beginning to set or rise whatever the... And, uh, yeah, you're back about uh, the city of Belrath. Balrath. Okay. You know, and also, guys, I had another thought here. If the little shit's hands aren't blue, what if it was, uh, what's the older brother's name? Lorath? Lithian. Lithian. What if it's Lithian trying to kill his little brother? Well, then we'll kill him right back. Okay. 
Lithian does seem to be our prime suspect, though. If we think about it, he just disappeared after taking a bath, possibly washing away the evidence. You know, you're on to something. Well, let's... I don't want to... I don't want to give up the opportunity to terrify a child. To bully, and... to bully an eight-year-old? Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't disagree with you. Let's go do that first. Yeah. Let's do that. So I personally go... never pass up the opportunity to bully an eight-year-old. <laughs> so we're going to go to um, Linksus Rotor's room and let's bang on the door really loudly to wake him up. Knock like we're the police. Uh, I will uh, use my cudgel of correction to pound on the door. About five or six seconds pass, and he darts to the door, and he swings home and says, What? what what's going on? Show us your hands. No. <laughs> like, fuck! And he extends his hands, and they are clean. Uh, How about that white robe of yours? We're going to see if there's any marks on it. Show us, show us that robe. He's like, how many times are you going to ask for my robe? Wait, 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 wait. One of you should inspect the underside of his fingernails. Let Show me, me your nails. Your shoes. Show us your shoes. Oh, uh, who is inspecting the underside of his fingernails? I'll do it. Give me a search check. Give me everything you got. Oh, yeah. Oh. You find <gasps> nothing. Oh, Dude. shit. It's lithium. Kids clean. Wait, wait. All right, here, Linksus. Are you... Two of two, or three of three as far as children go? I am uh, the youngest of two, yeah. Okay, two of two. All there right. aren't any bastards running around? I mean, I don't think so. Dad's a pretty, I mean, I don't, I mean I'm eight, so I really can't have this opinion, but I don't think he's like... Are you a bastard? No, dude. What? Where's your mother? Dead, dog. Oh, sorry. Well, we yeah. can't prove he's not a bastard with her dad. Dude, not Did cool. you do it? Did you kill your mother? Yeah. He's like, <laughs> whoa. He's like, whoa. Guys, guys, I did not kill my mom. This is whack. What is going on? Hey, do you know Do you know who your brother's uh, special friend is? What do you mean? Uh, he was visiting a friend last night. Do you, do you have any idea who that may be? No, I was asleep. Like... Like most people my age are at one o'clock in the morning. Uh, well, that doesn't help. I, I want to pull out that weird little crown and ask him if he recognizes it. Like, hey, you dick. I'm sorry. Young man, what do you think it's of like, this? You guys are so rude to children. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, you show him the crayon, and he has... Well, everybody rolls sense motive. Oh, man. I am fine with this one being a whisper to the GM. Too late. Sense motive. Where is that on this character sheet? Probably uh, towards right the under bottom. search. Ah. It's under the skills tab. Gotcha. Ooh, boy. Um, as far as any of you can determine, uh, he is, like, his minimal knowledge of this crayon. Like, he just, like, what is that? Like, that's a crayon. Like, what is up? Okay. You're... Like I said, the kid's clean. All right. Where's, hey, where's, uh, where's your brother's room? He says, uh, I think it's down the hall on the left. I don't know. Do you not know where your brother's room is? Because I try to be the only person in this town who doesn't know every single thing about it. You know what? That's fair. Yeah. Can I please just sleep? No, no, no. One more thing. One more thing. Why does your brother hate you? What? Well, that, but one more thing on top of that. Answer him first. Why does my brother hate me? I didn't think he did. Did he say something? Did he acknowledge <laughs> my existence? <laughs> Oh, he hates his brother. All right, so one more thing, one more thing. What does whack mean? Is that what the kids are saying these days? Uh, It's like when you hit something, you whack it, you know? You said that is whack. 
yeah, like that's a hit. Like it'll be popular and uh, one of the forty best uh, versions of whatever it is in a given. week. I whack a lot. Good to know. <laughs> I'm going to cast a spell. Okay. I'm gonna summon a swarm of spiders. Holy shit. Yo, why, dog? <laughs> and I want them to completely, uh, like, crawl all over this kid, and I'm gonna grab him and go... Well, that escalated quickly. Listen, you little puke. <laughs> I saw something in your eyes when I, we showed you that crayon. What do you know about it? He says, ah, let me go. This is insane. <laughs> um, roll an intimidate check. I'm gonna look at everyone else like, uh... Should we be allowing this? Yeah, I don't it's, do well with, with it's, people. It's fine. Just let him do his thing. He hasn't been wrong that many times. This might be illegal. <laughs> Children are flexible. He'll get over it. Oh my lasting god, dude. Lasting you mental damage. have succeeded in intimidating him. <laughs> what do you know? What do you know about this crayon kid? And he's just <laughs> spiders crawling all over him. He says, get the spiders off me and I'll talk. Uh, uh. Alright, I command them to, I don't know, go under his bed. He's like, oh, that's almost worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's so evil. He he Dark. looks at the crayon for a moment, and he just, like, lowers his head. He puts the bridge of his nose between his fingers, and he just kind of looks down. And he's like, what do you want to know? Okay, is this yours? He says, that's kind of a big question, I guess, in the context that you mean to ask it in. Yes. We found this in the graveyard. What were you doing there? Uh, I mean, I don't know, man. I was using it to uh, do magic, practice to practice some some minor magic, some minor dark magic, necromancy. One one could describe it as these things. Yes. I whack him with my cudgel. Cudgel. Uh, roll to attack. He's eight, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to like seriously injure him, but I want to let him know he did something wrong. The die has been cast. He's eight. <laughs> All right, I need to figure out how to attack. <laughs> I hit him with my cudgel. He's dead. Well, yeah, well, he's a commoner with count, six fellas. hit points and many, eight AC. How many inputs do I have to put in? I don't know if I did that right or not. <laughs> you attacked with your heavy mace. Uh, it appears that you neither hit his AC or killed him with your damage. So that is good. <laughs> I'll say that you just try to like intimidate him by hitting the ground with his head. <sighs> Tell me what you know. He says, okay, you guys you guys were in the graveyard, right? Yeah. When you looked around, did you notice anything weird about any of the tombstones? Well, there was a, a dandelion that was squished. And tree bones. He says, none of you beat a 22 on the checks to investigate that place? <laughs> no. <laughs> he says, oh, man. Well, he um, says, if you look out there very carefully, the uh, the headstones for... Lithian and Linksis have been out there for a while. I whack him with my mace. <laughs> I mean, roll to attack, I guess. He's still eight years old. <laughs> He's dead! <laughs> did you kill him? You didn't hit him, did you? No, he, he said his tombstone yeah. has been out there. Oh, he hit. Oh, he's dead. You do hit his AC, and you have knocked him unconscious. He has taken massive damage. I will roll a d100 to determine if you do actually outright kill him. The kid is fucking dead. Oh yeah, I forgot about your rules. If it's We need to leave um, town. He is unconscious and you have caved in his skull around his right eye. Oh god. It bleeds like he's fucking alive. Like you could have maybe asked some more questions and understood the situation a little better. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Oh, oh man. I might have acted too quickly. Now's the time to maybe, you know, brush up on some of those healing skills that Cuthbert maybe have taught you. <laughs> oh, shit, I can do that. Uh, oh. 
Let me look at my spell list. His left eye is just a puffy, red, bloody mess. Okay, so how does it work with dying? Like, uh, if they're at a negative, I have to get them above positive before they're conscious again? Or can I just do virtue to, like, give them one HP? Yeah, you heal from zero. So I could just, like, waste a zero-level spell to give them one HP and be good? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll waste purify food and drink and convert that into a healing spell to give them one HP. Nice, dude. Uh, with one hit point, he opens his right eye and he's like, "Ah, ah, what the fuck? Why did you do that? <laughs> Tell me what you know." And he reaches up and he's clutching his eye and he's like touching like the puffy spots and you can tell it's like smarting a little bit and he's like reeling. He's like, oh, "What the fuck was that about, man?" He says, do I look dead? Do any of you detect fucking evil or undead on me? Uh, we didn't try that. that. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. <laughs> You're a fucking cleric. All right. We need to. So uh... this might be a good time to say that I, I dropped out of training halfway through. He's, oh my God. Okay. Listen, I'll just tell you every fucking thing I know. Since you guys seem like the kind of people who are just going to walk around town beating ass until somebody else does. Why are you dead? I'm not fucking dead. What have you been listening for more than 30 seconds? Jesus. He says, "Me and the guy that everybody's calling Lithian, quote unquote." He says, "Uh, we cast a fucking spell on this town. The old man is senile. He has dementia. We're masquerading as his kids and going out and stealing shit in the name of these ancient battles that I guess the Lithian went and fought, but we're not Lithian or Lynxis." Oh, shit, I owe you a big apology. Yeah, dude, you just fucking cracked me one. Like, we're definitely being dickheads, but, like, we're mainly were just, dead. like, going out and pillaging shit. I'm not a fucking zombie. Okay. It's hard to tell. You're also right. not eight years old. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there I There are no super abilities am. that tell you with a 100% chance if you're dead or not. So okay. it's really just a judgment call. You guys. That's what they taught me. You guys are looking at this all the wrong way. Linksis, or whatever your actual name is, we're going to need hush money. No, no, no. We do this for free. No, we don't. <laughs> oh, no, we don't. <laughs> You're working for free. We are definitely... We need a bribe. Give us something here, Linksis. It says, I'll give you something if you give me something. What do you want from us? He says, well, I mean, if you figured out this much, you probably read the bones, right? Like you found the crayon thing. Right. Uh, yeah. Kill my fucking brother. Uh, where can we find him? Gladly. Wait. I don't know. He usually just walks around on the top of the town walls singing about how happy and rich he is. See, just we figured all this out. We were just like walking down the road, poor as a man can be, with a couple of spells in our back pocket. And, uh, when we realized that walking through the graveyard that one of these guys died at 8 and the other one died at 20 and we are 8 and 20, we realized that we had a pretty solid opportunity to impersonate some royalty. And uh, I was down to do it for like mm, a week, get some cash, maybe a crown, and fucking peace out of here. But uh, he does air quotes with his fingers, lithian over here, decided that he really likes being the guy that everybody in the town loves. And we've been here for fucking six months, and he won't listen to a word I say. So, yeah, I'm trying to kill him. Question, J does the mustache guy know? It says, oh, Basil? Yeah, of course. He's in on it. And Basil comes, steps out of the closet. <laughs> he says, yes, I have been uh, aware of this the whole time. That's why I told you it would be pointless to... Uh, to go searching. Mm. Basil, why okay. are you cool with this? Um, well, with the death of the young boys before uh, the, the, the mayor's death himself, I am the sole proprietor of his estate. And uh, if they go out and get a bunch of money for everybody in the town and make him a wealthy man, I mean, and then they leave or kill each other, then... When the mayor dies, I will become Omega wealthy. <laughs> I just, I need to clarify here. And I look to the eight-year-old. Is your brother dead? 
No, my brother's not dead. My brother's alive, but impersonating a dead guy, which is also what I'm doing. All right, so I look to the mustache guy. Are you dead? I am currently living. Well, I have to say your fashion sense is dead because that mustache is horrible. Says your fashion sense is dead. What are those Yeezys from 2015? Get off me. (laughs) All right, so we figured out the whole undead thing, but who stole the check? He says the chest. What chest? Oh, the one I saw in the field. Oh, last night, like six hours ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, that wasn't a chest. You rolled a fourteen on your perception check, and to actually correctly identify it, it was a fifteen. It was a clamor box. It's a magical item used to create uh, battle noises as a diversion. Fucking shit, that's cool. Can we have? Yeah. One? So what? that was you then. No, I didn't. I didn't activate the clamor box. I was in the graveyard summoning the the bodies. Wait, wait. Did Lithian activate the clamor box so he could sneak out on his date? No, he activated the clamor box so no one would see the skeletons coming. Why would he care since you summoned the skeletons to kill him? Well, he thinks the skeletons were just to, like, fuck with the town so that he could do something heroic and save the fucking day, which is all he cares about doing now. Oh. And then I made the skeletons to kill my goddamn brother. And then you guys and stupid Tillicum kind of ruined it. I say we still kill the kid. He broke the law. I'm pretty sure after the death of Tillicum, the city wants the kid dead. He says, you'll never take me alive and you all need to roll a reflex save. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> Should have never brought him back. I, we could have made some money off this. Damn. Oh! Ooh, nice one, Doric. I whack him with my cudgel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Henron. Duh, where are the saves on this sheet? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Henroth and Acadius with your fours. When he says, you'll never take me alive, you guys are like, fuck, he's probably right. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, he is in the midst of teleporting out of this room. Like, you have maybe three seconds to take either a movement or a standard action. The only one of you who are realizing this quick enough uh, to do something about it is Doric. I whack him with my cudgel. Roll to hit. Have you heard the good news? He's like, don't don't interrupt my monologue! As he's like trying to teleport. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you knock him right the fuck back unconscious. <laughs> Do you want- <laughs> Roll on the table. <laughs> knock his other eye out. So he's like midway through like doing his hand wavy jazz hands magic bullshit and you just like, no! And like smack him across the head. By the power of St. Cuthbert. Oh my god! Oh, yes! You... I mean, you crack him right where you've already crunched up his eyeball, and you've finished the fucking job. Most of his skull is uh, separated from most of the other bits of his skull. He's just like a powder-brained guy on the ground. I am the law! At this point, roll for initiative. Quick, get Basil. Who are we fighting? Basil says, well, you have certainly ruined my schemes now. Oh, man. (laughs) I I don't... This escalated quickly. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> fuck me, too. God, I do not want to fight this guy's mustache. Ha, guys, you're even... fighting more than my mustache. <laughs> Question, when the kid died, did he uh, did he change? Does he look different? No, he looks like an eight-year-old boy who got his fucking skull crushed. All right, so it doesn't wasn't... matter, he broke the law. He wasn't using an illusion or something to look like uh, the, the, His story the deceased. Story checked out. Uh, all right. Oh, man. He pled guilty. I administered punishment. It is all good in the eyes of St. Cuthbert. So it looks like we are going um, Doric, Henroth, Bert, Mornath. I mean, I'm so sorry. Doric, Henroth, Bert, uh, 
Basil and then Acadius with the nat one. Yeah. All right, give me some tacticals. What size room? How far away is he? You guys are in an eight-year-old's bedroom. The bed is a race car. He has uh, <laughs> the nine planets and sun of our solar system hanging above his bed in a mobile, which I guess doesn't fit an eight-year-old, but, I mean, it's still in there for the nostalgia's sake. They haven't updated. Yeah. He's got the uh, the Hot Wheels 1999, I want to say, set up. It's got the, the orange loop-de-loop with the shark that will fuck up your car if you oh. don't trigger the one thing. Uh, at the foot of his bed, he's got Mega Blocks, not Legos, because mm. while his dad is rich, he is not a fucking uh, willy-nilly spender. Um, he has the full Action Heroes castle slash uh, fire station, ambulance, repository, all that stuff. And Action Heroes or Rescue Heroes? Rescue Heroes, thank you so much. And alongside that, he does have two regular... Um, like shitty little eight inch GI Joes, but he does have one actual full size real GI Joe as well. Man. And the room is like 10 feet by 10 feet. Uh, Basil is standing inside the closet on the eastern wall. You three are all standing sort of in the, or four are standing in the doorway on the western wall. Between you, there's a dead child surrounded by his uh, loved belongings. <laughs> okay, so don't care about the dead child. Uh, I can tell from how you killed him. <laughs> <laughs> is there a penalty to shooting with my crossbow across the room? Do like, you have point blank shot? I do. Then no. I waste him with my crossbow. Okay, roll to attack. Wait, wait, wait. I heard that you were, uh, you always have your crossbow out. How did you strike the young boy with your cudgel? I was holding my crossbow with my left hand. Hmm. So you have dropped your cudgel on the ground at this point. I am dropping it right left. now. Okay, oh, perfect. My crossbow. Yes. Uh, does it count as flanked? I, I, I would say no, there. because it is not being flanked. <laughs> oh, so who did no. I hit? Who did I hit? <laughs> Um, just to make it interesting, I you think... shoot out the window beside this closet leading out into the street. I think I dropped my cudgel on top of my crossbow as I was pulling it up, and it just you dropped your cudgel on top of your own accident. foot as you fired a crossbow in a small room and just accidentally shot a window. Right, right. Uh, my bad. It did make a loud noise in the palace, though. Yeah, I'll end my turn. Okay. At the end of your turn, we go to Henroth. Is he wielding any sort of weapon? He is wielding a... Um, I would make you roll in a play, a praise check, but it's kind of cool if I just tell you and you're intimidated. He wields a masterwork longsword. A masterwork longsword. I am going to cast. Hmm, I'm going to cast heat metal on the armor or the sword. Oh, it's wearing for armor. Um, give me a spot check to see how accurate the information I'm about to give you is. Sure. But where are you? Oh, Hanroth, you're lovely. Nice. Um, I'm trying to find on my shit here where that is. Um. Oh. Okay. Um. There is absolutely no metal on this armor. Okay, well then I will cast it on his weapon, on his masterwork longsword. Okay. Smart move. You are successful. It just does not take effect until one round from now, correct? The first round, there's no damage? Uh, I'm just reading the spell now. I believe it's zero, then one, 
and then one and then two and then two and then one and then zero d fours of damage yeah. yeah round one none yeah one d4 two d4 one d4 none yeah okay and do you move into this room or do you stay at the doorway i will move into the room and hop up on the bed okay moving into the room invokes an attack of opportunity from him he is going to attack you okay I'm assuming a 10 does not hit your AC. It does not. All right. Well, um, Basil has missed on his opportunity attack. It is, however, his turn currently. He is going to shout out, Guards, the uh, strangers in town have slain our... Slain Linksis Router, the first of his name. Please assist me in dispatching them. And then he will uh, cast invisibility upon himself. Which brings us to uh, Mornath. All right. Uh, well, he just cast invisibility on himself, so I'm going to swishy poke at the air where he was just standing. Okay. Uh, nothing happens. Sigh. He did take movement afterwards. I just didn't feel the need to describe it because it would be almost impossible. That's fine. Okay. Having failed to see the air bleed, I will just sigh in depression. As would we all. Next in the order is, I believe, uh, Acadius, right? Am I missing anything? Uh, no, I don't. Every, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, everybody's uh, gone. Okay, sorry. Guys, I am really, really sorry for this. I cast oh, Glitter I, Dust. All right, everybody roll a Fortitude save. Uh, Will. Oh, Will, sorry. Uh, can I just take the Fortitude one? <laughs> then... oh. oh. I embrace the glitter. You really do. I've traveled with Acadius for a long time now. I mean, anyone who has seen Acadius act on more than one occasion knew what was coming. As soon as he cast invisibility. Yeah. I am shocked. As soon as he started like doing the chanting, I was like, yes. Uh, the number to beat is uh it's fifteen. Oh, oh no. We are oh. all glittered up. Except Acadius, yeah. damn. <laughs> oh man. So where the well, fuck Acadius. is Acadius? Yeah. Uh <laughs> Um, I will tell you that Basil, after casting his spell, took his full uh, compliment of movement 30 feet out of this room and into the hallway. <laughs> oh, fuck. We did not close the door, did we? <laughs> you absolutely <No>. did not. <laughs> okay. Guys, he's so not I, in the room! I don't believe you have, uh entrapped him with your glitter dust nor deactivated his invisibility that's fine i run out of the room and say follow me <laughs> okay everybody make a listen check because your eyes are full of glitter <laughs> oh god why <laughs> it burns it burns <sighs> oh Hey, nice. Finally. Uh, Mornath and Henroth, you are following along using your uh, dolphin-like sonar. Uh, Doric, you stumble and crack your head against a post. You're going to be taking 1d4 bludgeoning damage. Hey! 
All right, who was that taking the damage? You. Uh, Doric, sorry. Got it. So you take that four damage, but continue to follow along. Um, I guess we're kind of out of initiative, but I am going to have... Um, man, I don't know really how to operate this situation. How about... Doric, it is your turn to act. We'll just we'll stay in the order of initiative throughout the sequence of these events because it will matter the order in which they happen. Okay, so he ran out of the room. We know he ran out of the room. Yeah. And I am covered in glitter. Uh well I will run out into the hallway and then cast Create Water. And I want to create two gallons of rain at the end of the hallway. Okay. Um, how about you roll a hmm, just it a says basic twenty-five foot range plus five just foot with every a two basic levels. wisdom check to determine if you, in your blind state, can intuit the location of the end of this hallway. Fair enough. Hey, I was going to say DC 15. You, just from remembering, you know, the layout of this building and how you turned out into the hallway, your post that you hit your face on, <laughs> you cast rain at the end of the room, at the end of the hallway. And I in really that rain, got my bearings by hitting that post. You do see an invisible figure in this rain. I mean, not, not you, obviously. Acadius can see an invisible figure in this rain. Did I get him? You Is got him! There? I see him! Kill him! And uh, according to Heat Metal, also, though, it will start to boil water. Oh, oh shit, I forgot about the Heat Metal. He so was about to take 1d4 damage. Yeah, yeah. And steaming. I'm rolling rocks on these fours. Man, we have such good synergy, and we only just met. Right? <laughs> so, in the... Well, he took damage. Well, it wasn't a... Okay. In the rain at the end of the hallway, you see um, suddenly out of nowhere appears Basil's masterwork sword. It is glowing red hot. And you hear, oh, not my head. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the sword is dropped on the ground. It begins heating up the hardwood, I will repeat, hardwood floor of this place. But it's also being soaked in water and rain. And um, the invisible outline of a man exits to the right uh, of this hallway down a flight of stairs. Now, does like that water on him become invisible then? How does that work? I would say that you guys probably have a solid... 60 more feet. I'll roll a D100 to see how long it takes all that water. This will be how many feet he gets before he becomes fully like invisible again. Wow. All right. Well, um, I ain't mad at that. Yeah, there's about a 17 foot trail of water <laughs> leading down these steps around the corner and out the front door of the palace. And in the room that includes the front door of the palace, um, just as you guys get down this stairwell uh, around the corner and you see the door open and then close and you don't see anyone pass through it because he's invisible. Um, four guards approach you and say, what was going on up there? Why are you all wet and glittery? <laughs> Basil slayed Lynx's router. Quick, stop him. What? He killed him. That's why he's running away invisible. You're going to have to convince this guy that that happened. He loves Basil. Oh, everybody loves Basil. Everybody loves Basil. What is the convince skill in this? Uh, diplomacy. If you are not lying, and if you are lying, it's bluff. All right, bluff. <laughs> Wish me luck, fellas. 
He goes, fuck. Oh. Not bad. Not bad at all. He believes your lie. Let's get him, fellas. He says, oh my god, gentlemen, let's go, get Basil. He must have just left in that strange door opening incident. He's dripping so, water everywhere, follow him. So you three and those guards exit the front door. And yeah, I mean, it's just morning. The sun has risen. It's maybe like 7 a.m. now. And uh, people are just going about their daily normal lives. Like, no one really heard what happened in there. Uh, a couple of people are gathered below the shattered window, just like, huh, I wonder what that was. Hmm. But uh, otherwise, it's just like the town operating as it normally would currently. So, question to you, Jazz <laughs> uh, crowd. Uh, the kid said that he and his brother cast a spell over the populace to, I guess, have them uh, be believed that they were the uh, deceased children. Any way you can get rid of that? Or it would have to be sustained somehow, right? I'm going to lean out on a long bridge here and say that that's like one of those spells that's not in the book. It's like one of those narrative driving spells that doesn't really... I mean, I guess it would be like a suggestion, but... um, Yeah. Sorry. It's not like a, like a directly counterable thing. Like, if you guys made like a big, big knowledge arcana or spell check, I'm guessing you could like identify it or figure out a way to stop it, but... Yeah, I was yeah. almost thinking for it to be going on this long. Maybe they ha it's like something uh, something is enchanted to keep doing it. Like, you know, maybe there's an object or something. That could definitely be it. Um, quite honestly, I don't know how much I'm for killing that spell off. More so, I mean, once the guards find... Basil. Basil will probably be able to convince them that we did kill the boy, because we did. Right, so if we can end the spell, they would realize the boys have been long since dead. Oh shit, yeah, that's a good idea. So let's kill the other boy. I, gotta, I like your initiative. But, how about rather than that, how about, would detect magic tell me anything about that um oh, I, I mean works detecting the magic would determine like you know like if you used it then you would know the information it has to tell you mm. like you can't say if I use detect magic, what will I detect? And then I tell you, and then you go, okay, I'll do that. Yeah, <laughs> that's no, I understand. Yeah, no, I'm going to detect magic with the spell. Okay, I believe you have a 60 foot cone protruding from one of your hands that will illuminate like magical items and explain their magical aura to you and or like magical spells or magical people and whatnot. Right. So you're in the center of town where. Are you blasting your cone? Well, it's uh lasts up to it's at a minute per level. So I just wanna I just wanna start doing loose circles in the town square, see if I detect anything. Is that how that oh, works? Yeah, blast that cone everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, running around the town square. I mean, aside from the odd ring or amulet, nothing uh tips you off to the idea of like a powerful spell caster. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that came up with nothing guys. Well, you still have like, I would say like two minutes and 40 seconds. Oh shit. Okay. I'm sprinting around trying to figure this out. They said he likes to hang out on the city walls. Let's go check out the city walls then. Okay. So, I mean, how do you guys do that? Are you, like, getting to a place that before? Like, what are you thinking? It's a very good question. Mm -hmm. Um, how do we want to approach these fellas? Guns blazing. Just running around yelling, ah! I think so, yeah. Let's... Kill the kid! Kill the kid! I think we're in full-on, like, Scooby-Doo... 
chasing the bad guy mode right now. So you just yeah, like go up to the nearest uh, city wall stairs and sprint up them, but your legs are doing that thing where they're just like a cloud of smoke. Yep, that's it. Yes, and, and you hear that like Scooby Doo running noise. It's like yes, yeah. Okay, we go uh, in a door. Villain goes out another door. Yeah, when you guys get to the top, one of you hits your head, and you hear a boing. <laughs> um, atop the city walls, you do detect. <gasps> magic oh. of the enchantment school Ooh. coming from the north guys i'm picking up an enchantment towards the north let's fucking go oh. all right all radius <laughs> ruby ruby do oh geez guys <laughs> like like what do we do man <laughs> jinkies <laughs> all right let's head north yes Guns are blazing. Okay, you guys Crossbow are shooting your machine loaded. guns up in the air loudly as um, Highway to Hell plays in the helicopter above you. Um, you're running down this wall, and you do see Lithian. And he is in his white robe with his hood pulled up over his head. And beside him is another person. His like height and weight, roughly, just like another humanoid with a white robe pulled up over their head. Do they have a mustache? No. You can't see from here really any of their details. They're facing away from you. Are they the the source? Does my detect magic pick them up as the source? Your detect magic is taking you right there. My dogs are detecting driveway. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right, let's go. How far away are his, they? It might be him and his friend. Well, he's in a white robe. Well, I'm just going to close the door and my dogs can fend for themselves. Sounds like a plan. Well, we can turn that white rope red. We can. It won't even take a spell slot. <laughs> no, it won't. Okay. Man, that really just doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go to push to talk here for a minute. Let me jack up my settings. Okay. Uh, while you're jacking up your settings... Uh... I guess we should just run right the fuck up to him. Well, does somebody want to cast a spell at a distance, or what are we? Have a crossbow. Are um... we are we killing these guys, or are we well... getting? Hold on. Judgment must be dispensed. It's Mornath. Mornath, you were definitely of the kill them and end the spell to clear our name variety, weren't you? Oh yeah. Why don't I... As you get closer, you are detecting both illusion and enchantment. Okay. You got your crossbow ready there, Cutbert? Are there... Always. Are there any trees or anything along the wall? Um, basically no. Okay. Okay. I got, I got this, guys. I am going to drop... My glitter concentration. Dust. Not. I don't have glitter dust again. I use. I'm gonna drop my concentration on detect magic, uh, and then I'm just gonna cast grease right where they're at, and we'll just shoot them from a distance and see. Do if you have can... any spells that hurt people, or do you just have area of effect like bullshittery? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got some acid splash, and I've got some magic missile. The rest is just area of effect bullshittery. That is great to know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Acadius, he's not a big animal fan. So in the Conjuration School, he focuses on the area of effect bullshittery rather than summoning monsters to fight for him. He's not a big animal fan, but his like closest friend is a druid. A, a druid, and let's not forget Tido and Tito. That's right. I forgot about Tito. They've yeah. been such huge contributors to the story so far. Right? Right. <laughs> Anyway, Grease. Okay, I guess that means we're all rolling for initiative. Okay. Oh, humbug. Ooh, I did good. 
I'm not as good as the greased up bad guys. Oh shit! I'll the greased up guys. bad guy is quite furious. After you cast Grease, these two gentlemen turn to face you. Uh-oh. You realize that both of the gentlemen are Lithian. What? Banana! ruh -roh. And he explains to you, he says, Well, pretty uh, slippery situation you've put me in, I gotta admit, guys. Um, I'm assuming if you're here pretty much right off the bat performing hostile actions, you've gotten to my little shithead of a brother and kind of figured out the scheme. Yes. Yes, we have. And we accidentally killed him, so we have to now kill you, so... It was no accident. Uh, okay. He shrugs. He's like, that doesn't matter. The only person that I love is here with me now. And he turns to the other Lithian, and he, like, caresses his cheek. He's like, soon we can be together. And then the other Lithian remains silent. That's the weirdest form of masturbation it. I've ever come across. I get it. He says, well, are we going to battle or, like, what's the deal? I mean, I know it's all greasy over here, but, like, are you going to bust out some big boy shit or am I going to have to get this party started? Oh, wait, I rolled the highest initiative. <laughs> okay, so Lithian, I will call him A, sprints directly left along the wall, and Lithian B sprints directly right along the wall for 30 feet. Lithian A on the left will cast mm, magic missile directing one of his missiles at each of you what a jerk yeah so gentlemen in roll 20 from left to right i have you arranged acadius henroth mornath and doric yep is that what everybody else sees? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That is the order in which these D4s are going to strike thee, unless any of you has barrier, which I don't think you do. No. Nope. So, Acadius. Fuck. Uh, Henroth. Hold on. I'm just going to copy this really quick so I can just paste it two more times. Uh, you can just hit the up arrow. Really? I have rolled four consecutive yeah. fours on D4s. <laughs> there we go. So that's Mornath. Give me another one. And like, Doric. This might be a good time to tell you guys that I rolled a one and a two on my hit hit dice. So uh, yeah. my oh, max no. HP is not that high. What's your HP? Really? Um, a total of 20. Doric. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, your first hit die was max, obviously, and the second two, I, I did this with everybody else. I forgot all about it. We were supposed to roll like against each other, and whichever one of us got the better die roll, you should have gotten. I mean, I'm fine with it. It's not a big deal. I got healing spells. Yeah, we're in the heat of the moment now, and it's just a horrible character flaw that you're going to have to live with because I was too short-sighted to remember that minor adjustment to my game style. I'm not worried about it. Hey, me neither. The other <laughs> Lithian casts Mage Armor on himself and that's about it which brings us to oh god I'll have to roll past all these d4s to look at the initiative I think it's Acadius, Mornath, Henroth, Doric okay right. okay so it's Acadius uh, I'm gonna, you know, they say if someone magic missiles you, you magic missile them right back. Uh, That's what my daddy always told me. Yeah. Did they fall from the grease? That is a great question. Oh, I should have rolled their reflex saves. And more importantly, is um, grease combustible? 
Oh. Oh, excellent question. I don't think it is. I'll check. Well, that's a really I believe that idea. Lithian A passes on his um, Grease check. Lithian B also oh. passes on his check. Those turds. So neither of them fell down. Okay. Uh, it does not say if it's combustible or not. Yeah, I did not see that either. Uh, I'm just I have gonna... always treated the grease from the grease spell as combustible entirely. Okay. I have no fire spells, though, so I am going to uh, magic missile and send a bolt at each of them. One at each? Okay. I will take it A will be first and B will be second? Yes. Okay. Nice and nice. There we go. Okay. So they have each taken four damage. This is, I will tell uh, all three of you, four of you, the basically the crux of this game. Like this is the final boss is Lithium. Kind of figured. Yeah. So, so go all I out. Expect Lithium to strike at least half of you down. <laughs> Which one? Which two? I don't know. Um, I think that brings us to Mornath, and then it would be Henroth Doric. Mm -hmm. There is an initiative tracker in Roll20. That would require minimal effort from me, so... <laughs> okay. Well, I am going to uh, wing a sling stone at, uh, I guess... Eight. Okay. That sling stone does not hit, which brings us to Henroth, unless you would like to move. Uh, moving as just a matter of course to stay out of, uh, you know, <laughs> they'll have to keep up with me. So, you know, just, just moving around uh, just to stay out of targeting range sort of. Okay. The way I'm seeing this in my head is like, you guys, since the walls of this town are a square, you guys were approaching them on, like, the northern straight line wall from either the east or the west, and, like, from around a corner. Not really around a corner. Like, they're on the same level of, like, latitude as you or height, I guess. But one started sprinting, like, towards you guys along the track that would be this square, and the other started sprinting away along the wall. If that makes any sense. Like when I said they split up left and right. So one is running away from us. Yes. My jerk. Yeah, what a jerk. Well, how far away would he be? He would be... Um, well, the grease is 10 feet of double movement, so he would be... Uh, 20 feet away from the grease, which I think would be roughly 50 feet from you guys copy I believe that is Hanroth's turn yeah Hanroth is going to hmm, this is the big fight I am going to cast yeah it's kind of lame oh maybe not I'm going to cast Summon Nature's Ally 2. Ooh. Oh boy. Do I have to roll or do I just get to choose one? No, you just choose one. Like one of the ones listed there. Yeah. Okay, cool. I am going to cast a Hippogriff. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to send you the Hippogriff from the D20 SRD? Uh, I think I have the, the stats here in front of me. Okay, perfect. So this thing is just kind of kind of like... Kind of soar down out of the sky towards the one that's um, getting further away from us. 
Okay. I, I did not expect it, this. I don't know if it gets an attack on its first turn. Probably not. Um, I don't believe so. I believe it just comes into being and is there until... I will put it in initiative alongside you. Okay. Which I think... I mean, unless you want to chase them as well on foot through the grease and through uh, number... I mean, not number. Letter A. Lithian. Then... Um, are you just going to stand still? I'm just going to stand still, yeah. Okay. So that would bring us to Doric. I am going to cast Hold Person on the Lithian running away. Okay. Is that a will save? Will save. DC 14. Oh, man. They've got a pretty decent will save. But you're going to roll a one. I'm not. <laughs> oh man for a second he pauses and is like uh, huh you didn't get me and keeps running uh i can only cast one spell a turn right i can't like turn my movement into another action uh yeah that is correct all right then i will move uh closer to lithian a or b whichever one's like moving towards us but not within uh, melee range. Okay, I want to call that Lithian A. Got it. So you move like 20 feet towards him. Right, so I should be like 25-ish feet away from him. That sound about right? Give or take, yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm good. Okay. That brings us to Lithians A and B. Lithian A, the one beside you, is going to approach you and uh, draw an attack of opportunity from you if you currently have your uh, melee weapon drawn. Oh, I got my crossbow drawn. Okay. So he will not provoke an attack of opportunity. He will, however, um, cast... i just just looking at it, damn it. Touch of Idiocy... Bring it on! There's... So you need to roll a will save. Well, if this goes into effect, it won't make any difference. No! Oh. It's just a fun spell that I really like. Oh, damn! <laughs> I'm already an idiot! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, with that... Yeah, with that, Lithian A will start running away as well. Lithian B is going to cast Deep Slumber on hmm, Doric, because you are currently the most threatening. I have been up all night. This one might work. Do I need to do a will save? Oh, yes, you do. Sorry. I was just staring so intently at that last one as if you had... Oh, my God. As if you had done it again, and I was going to be livid, <laughs> is the words that were going to come out of my mouth. Lithians A and B both go in unison. Damn you! <laughs> Fear me! How are you so foolish yet so willful? <laughs> And and that brings us to goddamn um, Mornath. Or no, right. Arcadius. Oh. Well, uh, I'm just going to throw a couple more magic missiles at them. Okay. Uh, A's first one, B's second one. Okay. That brings us. All right, are you gonna move or do anything else or uh, say anything? I want to back out of the, back up a little bit. Don't want to get too close to anyone trying to swing at me. Okay. Then that's it. That brings us to. I thought it was I thought it was Acadius Mornath Henroth 
Doric. Sure. Let's yeah, nothing big for me. I'm just going to wing another sling stone at the one that is furthest from us that's trying to get away. Okay. Should still be within my range. Hey, that hits. That is four more damage. There are a lot of extra little things they want you to add to that hit button. <laughs> right? I know. I am Crazy. I have no idea about these D D three point five character sheets on Roll Twenty. I wish that they were easy, but also no part of this game whatsoever is easy. This is my first time playing three point five on Roll Twenty. Hey, me too. Um, well, that brings us to Henroth. All right. Well, let's do the hippodiff, hippogriff dive. No, no, it's hippodiff. A hippodiff, my hippodiff. Is he in hippodifferent? Sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think you provoked an attack of opportunity with that joke. Oh, there you go. So the hippogriff is going to dive at um, Lithian B. Okay. So I guess I got to roll to attack for that? You certainly do. Go Buckbeak. Did you bow to him first? Yeah. Yeah. That is and certainly a hit. It is. That's oh, claw damage. So it, is, so it shows attack, and it's got claw, but then it shows full attack, and it's like two claws and a bite. So what does he get? So if you take your entire round and no movement to strike only, then yeah. you would take a full attack action. But he's but, diving, so he gets But those. since he did dive, you would just take a singular claw. Gotcha. And five damage, two. Okay. Uh, Lithian B. Lithian B is starting to get kind of fucked up. Dork, it is your turn. Do I get to act in addition to my hip hippodiff? Oh, you certainly do. Sorry. No worries. I am going to throw a spell at Lithian A. I'm going to toss... Da, 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 produce flame at him. Okay. And that's a touch from you, right? Not regular AC? It's, it's a touch or or... You can throw it. I'm going to hurl it at him because he's he's running away from us, right? Yeah. So I'm going to throw it at him. Ooh, that okay. is not the right thing to roll. A d4. <laughs> Plus four. Uh, a seven will miss. 22. Oh! God That's damn. a critical hit. 20. Okay, nice. roll double damage. The way that I tend to do this is add up your, like, like the three and the four, like double the dice, obviously, and then do your like modifiers and then multiply by two. Oh. So that would be 22. Okay. Or no, 18. Sorry. I'm an idiot. 18. Yeah. Double. I'll take it. 18 damage. And that is massive on uh, Senior Lithian B. So I wind up and hurl this ball of fire at him, and let's say maybe a bit of the <laughs> grease caught fire. Yeah, maybe some grease was still on his robes or something, but he is completely immolated. He will be taking one further d6 of fire damage every round after this, despite the actions taken in that round. Okay, Henroth just starts cackling. Nice. Uh, do you use that cackle to expend a hex? I don't know what that means, but sure. It was just a very, very funny Pathfinder joke for the four players I have who have uh, not played very oh. much Pathfinder. <laughs> Got you. Yes, I do. The oh, Witch right. Advanced class has a class feature called uh, Hexes, and uh, one of the other class features is called Cackle, and you can use Cackle to extend the duration of your Hexes. So when you said, I'm Cackling, I was like, oh, are you going to extend the duration of your Hexes? And uh, Totally. Yeah. That brings us to Doric. Sorry, everybody. 
I want to cast Calm Emotions on the Lithian that is still here. Okay. My lover is dead. You have no reason to keep fighting. Is that a will save? That is a will save. Oh, no. PC 14. Son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, can you read calm emotions for me? It's for you if you want. I just want to know. It's basically, oh, damn, it's all up in here. Okay. You have no control over the effects of creatures, but calm emotions can stop raging creatures from fighting or joyous ones from reveling. Creatures are affected, cannot take violent actions, although they can defend themselves or do anything destructive. Any of action against creatures are not Should last uh, three rounds. Okay. Unless any negative, like, uh, aggressive action is taken against the calm creature. So, damn. What else do you intend to do this turn? Make sweet, sweet love to him. Uh, Lithian, it's time to give up. The other you is dead. Your brother is dead. That's endless. The other Lithian is endless peaceably. Just very nearly dead. Close enough. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Roll diplomacy. With my one charisma. Yeah. Oh man, that's a pretty bad sense motive for me. Oh Christ, you have successfully convinced him to chill a little bit more. It's not just the calming effect of the spell. He is like, ah, ah, looking around. It's like, oh no, uh, the whole situation's really crumbling around me right now. Indeed it is. It's time to end this. All right, and that is uh, Lithian B's turn. I will say Lithian B goes first this time, because I'm not sure about what to do with Lithian A. Lithian B is going to cast Scorching Ray at both Acadius and Doric. Oh, man. Oh, he's just jealous because I'm moving in. Oh, wait, no. Henroth, you did the Produce Flame, right? I did. Okay, so Henroth and Doric. So let me roll this attack against Henroth. Damn it. And that's against Doric. He's jealous. Does that hit you? Yeah. All right. I did forget to add my armor, but it does hit me. Well, this is against touch, by the way, because it's a scorching ray. Oh, I don't know what the difference is. Uh, you would you would remove your reflex bonus from your total AC. Oh, okay. Well, uh, uh, I get four from my armor, one from my buckler, so I would still be at a 15. Okay, and Henroth, uh, your touch AC is not 10, I'm assuming? Um, no. Touch AC is 12. Close. Okay. Shit. Um, Doric, you're about to take some damage. You're going to take 13. Whoa. I have one hit point left. That's <laughs> massive. Does that mean you get to roll on the table of fun? Oh, you certainly do. So this is what happened to both <laughs> Henroth and Acadius. I'm going to roll a 1d6. Um, one is your left leg. Two is your right leg. Three is your left arm. Four is your right arm. Five and six are torso and head, respectively. If I roll a five or a six... You will basically have been killed. Who is this against? Uh, Doric. Henroth. Doric. Oh, man. And Doric is what he was saying. Hey, you uh, have your right leg blasted off by this big scorching ray. Holy shit. You take it's a minus... Right. I didn't like that one as much. I'm you take a leg. minus four on uh, any dexterity or strength-based ability, skill, or... Uh, check. Got it. 
Nice. Um, that brings us to Lithian B, who I is... I love you, help me! <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, uh, brother, uh, I don't know what we should do. Um, and he's kind of losing it a little bit. And... Man, I just don't really know what he's going to do. Uh, he's going to say, why should I give in to you? Why shouldn't I just die fighting? Because I love you. I want to call that one a roll to, out of my leg. roll to bluff, unless you mean it. Well, I mean, I'm open to the possibility. I, I'm, I'm single, you know, I'm... I mean, if you if you mean it, you roll diplomacy. <laughs> oh man, no, he doesn't believe that you are in love with him. He just says, "No, you don't mean that." And he's gonna, um, I do. This just really fucking hurts right now. He's gonna cast magic missile. No one has attacked Mornath, who has been shooting slings. He's gonna send two at Mornath and one at each of Henroth and Acadius. I I don't think he can take an aggressive action for three turns. Oh, you're right. Three Damn rounds. It. God. Um, he's like, man, I really want to fight so bad, but something about this situation is making me not fight. So, I guess, do you guys want to hear a poem? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Um. Uh. Uh. Um. I I met a man walking through the desert, and. He was eating something, and I said, what are you eating? And he revealed that it was his heart, and he said, I'm eating my heart, and it is bitter, bitter, but I like it because it is bitter and because it is my heart. That doesn't even rhyme. Not all poetry has to rhyme. That was an offensive action. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but that is the end of his turn. That brings us to... Basil. Basil oh, appears so. behind the party. He says, I bet you thought that uh, I was just going to run like a little huh, wiener. <laughs> and he is going to attack Acadius, who I believe to be standing the furthest back with yeah. his masterwork sword that is no longer really hot. Book. Didn't he drop that in the hallway? I mean, he was invisible, and you guys just kind of wandered off. He went we back and grabbed it. Away. Probably just went back and got it afterwards. Someone should have probably picked that up. <laughs> now, as cool as that roll is, he also has a improved critical and will take a critical hit with that 19. Oh, Acadia! I just, I just want you guys to know, I have 7 HP going into this. <laughs> oh, man. You're done you yeah. shouldn't have said that <laughs> now i feel bad <laughs> taito is going to be very angry at you so that is going to be a whopping grand total of 18 holy shit Roll do you up. have fun do you have greater than or equal to 11 constitution oh man my constitution is 11 acadius my friend you are going to roll a singular d20 with no bonuses. If it is higher than 15, you will be at negative 11 and have one round until your death. <laughs> if it is below 15, you have permanently been killed. <laughs> Basil teleports behind the group and says, huh, you almost made me use 10% of my power. And then he stabs Acadius through the fucking heart. Oh, god damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No. oh I feel like I hardly knew him. Next up is Mornath, because Acadius' turn doesn't exist. Wow, okay, so we have uh one of them on fires. Yeah, one of them's burning. Ooh, I didn't make him take his fire damage. This could be very critical. <laughs> <coughs> oh thank god. It's still massive, but all right, I mean, well, I'm going to wing another sling stone at the one that's burning to death. Let's just get rid of him. Okay, well, the burning to death did just kill him. Okay. <laughs> okay, so across the way, as you guys are all in shock that 
Acadius just got stabbed through the heart. The other sprinting away Lithian just like collapses. <laughs> I mean, couldn't he have done that before he attacked? Come on. Oh, <laughs> just like how super unceremoniously. Before he blew off my leg. How All right, uh, so how close is uh, the guy that's just appeared? How close is The he? gentleman who just appeared, uh, I'm assuming you guys were relatively close together. I mean, maybe separated by no more than 5 to 10 feet between all of you. I mean, not between all of you, but between I each individual ahead. member. Yeah, Doric was about 20 feet ahead, and then I would say behind you was Henroth, and then Mornath said that he also moved a bit away, as did Acadius. So I would assume, like, Mornath, you are probably right next to Acadius's now limp body, and Henroth is maybe 10 to 15 feet away from you towards Doric, who is like 20 feet away from you. So could I close that gap, draw my rapier, and attack on the same... You would provoke an attack of opportunity, but yes. Um, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Uh, a five does not strike you, I assume. No. Okay. Duh. <laughs> Neither does mine. Oh, yeah. man. You guys are doing a big, shitty job of fighting because of all of Acadius's blood. <laughs> it's, it's That brings us it's... to Henroth. All right. So, like, how dead is Acadius? Would a healing spell bring him back, or is he, like, he's dead? Acadius' soul has passed into the ethereal plane, and his body is now simply a material object. No. So you're saying we can bring him back? I'm, no. I'm dead dead. Blood everywhere. It's like I cast right. Grease a second time. Let's, um... <laughs> Let's do Hippogriff on on uh, Lithium, too. Okay. Because oh, he, he's calm. He's calm I will. for two more turns. He's calm. Could my Hippogriff fly over here and hit Basil, or is it too far away? I would say that your Hippogriff is fast and can fly, and it could do that and would provoke an attack of opportunity. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Attack of opportunity on him. Does a 14 hit him? His AC. Where the hell is his AC? Uh, is a 15. Damn you, says Basil, as the Hippogriff definitely it's evades his strike. Actually, the, the Hippogriff's going to land next to him. So he still only gets one attack because he moved. He's going to land there with us. 15, does that hit Basil? Does that hit Basil? It certainly does not. Damn you! <laughs> um, he says, we are all terrible combatants today. And... I am going to just wait. I'm going to hold my action. Okay. Actually, I have a sling. Let's, let's, let's use my sling. Okay. I, I lied. Sling away. <laughs> Oh, all these number ones. All these boxes. Oh! Whoa! Yeah. Okay, so that would be... 12 damage? If I'm reading this correctly, do you have a plus 5 to damage with your sling? No. Why would I have a plus 5? Well, it just says you have 1 damage plus 5 crit damage. I don't know how that it is calculated. Crit. It rolled the second uh, die for the crit. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So do you not have a bonus to damage with the sling? No. Okay, so it would just be a total of 1 plus 5 times 2. So, 12. 12 which if that sling. Which, if any other attack had hit him, would be massive on... Basil. But it was just a stone. It was a pebble for my spit. So I know. You just crack him right between his eyes. I will say that he is dazed, and that next round he can either attack or move, but neither, like, not both. Nice work. And that brings us to Doric. All right, I'm not going to be running anywhere this turn. Um... I'm going to cast aid on myself. Okay. 
So I get uh, three plus, I believe, three temporary hit. And I get plus one on uh, future attacks. Okay. And is that the end of your turn? Yeah, because uh, moving is going to be hard with one leg. So I'll, I'll stay put and bleed. Okay. You take... <laughs> Jesus, you take three bleeding damage. All right, so neck gain three. I'm okay with that. Um, That brings us to Lithian A, the one who still lives, and he cannot take hostile action, so he is going to contemplate life. Which brings us to uh, Basil. And Basil is going to engage in a duel with Mornath. So Mornath, he is going to strike out at thee. I don't think that gets you. A 16 actually does. I have a 15 AC. Oh, nice. He will deal his damage. You have been dealt six damage on this day, sir. A mere flesh wound. And don't you ever forget it. That brings us directly to Mornath. Who will counterstroke? Blades as sharp as their wits. That definitely hits. For five. Damn. Not massive, but this basil is quite low. That brings us to Henroth. Nah. And right. I, I don't want to interrupt your turn, which I'm explicitly doing, but it is nearly uh, 7.30 my time. Do we yes. want to cut off the climactic finish of this combat for next week? And then, since it will not be long, we could also start our recap and or incoming show uh, episode then. Yeah, we could do that. We could do our, our after show, like right after it. That's I'm fine with that. That sounds excellent to me. So we'll wrap this okay. up next week with the end of the climactic finishing battle. And then uh, we'll do our after show where we're going to discuss, I don't know, what we thought of the game. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the main points that I had listed out, my ideas were um, what you guys did and did not enjoy, um, how the situations that you guys encountered might be played out differently in the different systems that you want to run. Um, and, uh, yeah, just general vague, like, criticisms. And, like, since we are all dungeon masters, you guys could go over, like, like, say, like, if I was DMing, like, if, if my game that I just ran was, like, the verbatim text of a module, how would you guys have altered it, I guess? Type of okay. stuff. Cool. Yeah, sounds Let's, good. Yeah. yeah. And then we can spend some time uh, introducing. I think Zweihander is next, or we're going to do a Twitter poll. We're not sure yet, but uh, we can spend some time introducing our next system and um, kind of discussing its its highlights and its flaws or whatnot, and then and then just bullshit about games for like I don't know, fifteen twenty minutes. That sounds great to me. Yeah, I can handle that. Okay. Well, I will see you fine gentlemen uh, a week from today with the climactic finale. Of the uh, the Balareth saga. How will it finish? Will Mornath kill everyone for us? Will Henroth finish mourning that flower? What's Acadius up to these days? And is the grease bell flavored? <laughs> <laughs> Find out the answer to all these questions and more next week with the notorious DMG. And then we got to do that uh, acapella outro music. There's five of us now. I'm going to say Acadius, Ooh. you're on bass. Jowzam, you're on drums. I will, oh man, I'll I'll hit you guys with like a light melody so as not to overpower the group. Bert, I want you to hit me with some vocals. And Steven, can you please, please hit me with just like a gentle flute solo? 
I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. <laughs> All right, on three. A one, a two, a one, two, three. All right, see you guys next week. I'm going to close all the shit on this computer and end this recording. Later, guys. Thanks for watching, people. Thanks. Put it on fires.